tell him oh, 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 you just call him up and tell him oh Lord call him call him up and just tell him call him call him call him up and you can tell him what you want solicit your prayers, okay? Uh, I'm going to read from the book of Acts, chapter 9. Acts, chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. And these verses say, Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of the masters, so that if he found any who were off the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. As he journeyed, he came near the master, and suddenly a light shined around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the gold. Uh, so he trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do 
you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. You may be seated. Use for a thought this morning, a personal change. A personal change. For years, psychologists have been saying and thinking and trying to figure out how could they change a person. They have talked about nature and nurture. They talked about uh, the biology of a person. So if you change the makeup of a person, we can change the entire person. And somebody else say, well, uh, the person is a product of his or her environment. You take them out of that environment, then you'll change that person. Uh, they, 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 they looked and they studied individuals. And, 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 and they still haven't come up with the answer that they were trying to come up with. They say that you can arrange an individual's environment. Yeah. You can adjust his ambition and his goal. Yeah. You can give him an education, but you can never really change him. All right. I'm reminded, I'm reminded when I reflect back on the why I say yes, the book of Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 6 yes, says train up a child the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. So, 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 so God has to have something to do with an individual. For an individual to have a personal change, God has to be in the equation. So humanly speaking, the theory might be very true. But it, 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 but it in itself, in the spiritual realm, is absolutely false when you think that a man can change a man without the help of God. All right. All right. All right. All right. Millions of people in this world can testify along with me that a man, woman, boy, or girl can be radically changed or radically transformed in life and in their action through a personal relationship with Jesus the Christ. The Apostle Paul wrote in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 that therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature for all things are passed away and behold all things have become new. When you talk about a personal change, Paul was very qualified to write about a personal change. He was qualified to write what he wrote here in the book of Acts. But I want to make three points here to you before I sit down. Number one is his purpose was changed. The book of Acts let, lets us know that Saul of Tarsus was actually engaged in a deliberate program to eradicate Christianity. He hated Christianity. He hated Christ and everything that Christianity stood for. The first time we were introduced to Saul was in Acts chapter 7. You, you, remember, you remember the stoning of Stephen. You remember how he was a young man and, and how that that, 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 that the men pulled their garments off, pulled their coats off, and they laid them down at the feet of Saul. And Saul never said to them that you shouldn't be doing what you were doing. He consented to what they were doing. They, when they stoned Stephen, why did they stone him? Because he was full of power and the Holy Ghost from God. Because he was speaking out against the things that were going on. Because he was calling evil, evil, and sin by his name. And the people were dissatisfied. And they stoned him to death. And Saul never said a word 
while they were stoning him. And then when you come to Acts chapter 9, we, we see Saul on his way to the master. You see where he had gotten the authority from the high priest to go to Damascus yeah. and bring all the, the who he found serving the true and living God. Yeah. Yes, and, and, and God saw him as he traveled. Yeah. But, but in the cause of action, there was a personal change. Yeah. And in this personal change, not only was there a purpose for change, but his perspective was also changed. His point of view was also changed. He saw things differently from that moment forward. A flash of light had blinded his eyes. He could not see for a period of time. Could it have been God showing him that he had always been spiritually blind? And when you are spiritually blind, you are unable to see spiritual things. You might see things with your physical eye, but it's not the same as seeing with your spiritual eye. And, and number three, and closing, not only was his purpose changed, not only was his perspective changed, but his personality was changed. He was a violent man. Yeah. He was a uh, persecutor. Yeah. He was a cruel man. Yeah. He was a uh, vicious man. Yeah. He could uh, sit and look at uh, somebody being killed, uh, and he would not say uh, a mumbling word. Uh, but on his way uh, to the masters, uh, God uh, saw him uh, and uh, saw his commitment uh, to what he believed in uh, and uh, looked to me like he said uh, that there is a man uh, who I can use uh, in uh, my service. Uh, there is a man uh, who is committed to uh, what he believes in uh, and because of uh, his commitment, uh, I'm going uh, to get his attention on uh, his way to Damascus uh, and he shined uh, a light round uh, about him uh, and he fell uh, unto the ground uh, and he cried out uh, oh Lord uh, what will uh, you have uh, me to do and the Lord said arise and go on uh, to Damascus I have uh, somebody there who would take you uh, what I would have uh, uh, you to do uh, when I think about uh, my own life uh, I think about uh, the Lord God uh, how he came in uh, to my life uh, when I was on uh, the wrong road uh, he stopped me uh, turned me around uh, you look at me today uh, I might not be all uh, you want me to be uh, I might not be all uh, I ought to be, but thank God Almighty, I am not what I used to be. That's enough. That's enough. As we close, bow your head with me. God, our Father, we come now in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We just want to say thank you, God. Thank you for this day, this day that you have given us. We thank you for allowing us to come and be a part of this meeting here in San Antonio, Texas. We thank you for all those who have put this together. Thank you for our president. Thank you for his staff. Thank you for this church and this pastor. And in God, we ask that as we go forward, you lead and guide us every day. Help us to be the people who you are calling for in these last days. Thank you, God, for changing us from what we used to be to what we are now. And thank you, God, and we love you today. And we are careful to give you the glory and honor. In Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen.
Okay. If we've been dealing with uh, what people say is African American Black History Month, yes, and we are black all the year. <laughs> But at least we get some recognition. So I want to go back a little bit before we became so dependent on these organs and instruments. And I need you to just help me. Let's stand up. Let Jesus lead you. Let Jesus lead you. Let Jesus lead you. I like it. All the way.
an inspirational devotional message. Praise God for Pastor Jones. Just give a preacher a microphone. Get excited about the Word of God. Brothers and sisters, we are so tremendously blessed as National Baptist Convention of America International to have such a great visionary leader who's, who's leading us to higher heights as people of God, a convention that serves churches. And he has been true to his commitment to allow this convention to be developed in such that it can be the premier convention in this United States of America. So would you stand now and join me in receiving our national president, Reverend Dr. Samuel Tarver. Let's receive him with a great amen. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Um, I would like to ask that those who are, uh, other than ushers, those who are one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's leave seven pews empty in the back. All right. On all rows, if that makes sense, yeah. what I'm saying. And let's move beyond those seven pews. And uh, some of you all can move up. Well, there's some officers reserved seats that are not here. Boards and commissions, your seats are here. Any secretary, treasurers, chairmen of boards or commissions, there are reserved seats here. And uh, Reverend Kemp, what is that second one right there? That third pew, it has a ministers, preachers, and pastors. All right. So Reverend Layless Johnson, will you come up a little closer, maybe? Uh, right there. Yeah. It looks better already. Because I wouldn't want to miss you if you wanted to make a motion, you know. Right. <laughs> we appreciate your cooperation. And then when others come in, uh, they will fill in those seats um, towards the rear. Thank you so much. Again, I want to thank Dr. Kenneth Kemp and the Antioch Missionary Baptist Church. As I host it, I know there are some additional co-hosts, um, uh, the Reverend Jared Daly and the Macedonia Baptist Church, uh, Reverend Williams, and wasn't there another one? And Reverend Kevin Nelson. Um, they are all assisting. Kevin Nelson and I were in Bishop College together. Um, and I had an opportunity to reconnect with him when I was here some time before, and Pastor Kemp gave a marvelous reception for me over uh, in a beautiful room there in the Life Center. But I want to thank all of them and all the churches of this area for opening their doors. I know it's a lot of work uh, hosting, and I know we're not some of the most uh, easiest people to deal with. Amen. Amen. But I do want to say this morning as it relates to the courtesy vehicle. Hello? Amen. They don't have free written on them. They don't have free written on them. They don't have a price, somewhat. But we should not ride from the hotel to the church and back and not be courteous to these drivers with some Lajon in Louisiana. It's called Lajon, money. Uh, thank you is good, but when you go to the gas station to fill up, if you fill up and say thank you, they're going to send the police out there. So please let us be nice uh, to these people who are assisting us uh, with the transportation. And they have done an excellent job. When we come out there, there are cars everywhere, and they are awaiting uh, buses and vans and waiting to bring us here to the Antioch Baptist Church. I want to take a moment to recognize the presence of our executive cabinet uh, that is with us this morning. We'll have them to stand, and what's going to make it easier, I'm going to have them to tell you who they are in order, starting from the Vice President at large, so I won't have to remember the names, but I know them. Pastor Bartholomew Banks of Tampa, Florida, Vice President at large. Please. Pastor Bartholomew Banks of Tampa, Florida, Vice President at large. 
Pastor Frank Gordon, Tennessee, second vice president. Robert Alexander, Birmingham, Alabama, fourth vice president. The right Reverend Napoleon <laughs> Darnell Smith from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Morris and Orlando, Florida, statistician. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I was the third vice president. You want to be the right Reverend Catholic. F.D. Sampson, uh, treasurer, Houston, Texas. S.C. Dixon, general secretary, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. D.L. Grant, Recording Secretary, the Palmetto State of South Carolina. Let's give them a hand. These are executive officers uh, who help us with uh, the day-to-day -day and keeping things moving uh, in our convention. As we know, Dr. F.D. Sampson, uh, Sr., I think I'm saying that right, uh, retired as the pastor of Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, uh, and upon his notification to me that he would be retiring, uh, I notified him that was from Friendship. Uh, we needed him to remain treasurer. Uh, and I want you to know, the reason I single him out is not to demean anyone else, but as it relates to the money and the bills and checks and all, he has a lot of work to do. Uh, and he can be trusted. Some of these other officers, uh, like Reverend Banks and others, have had to uh, get a call from me telling them I needed ten thousand uh, dollars, and we would get back to you when we get it. And Reverend Banks uh, has a way of never seeming to get upset, and he just said, oh, "Okay, Brother President, I get it to you." But I just want to thank these officers uh, for the help that they have given to me because a lot of things you give me credit for is somebody else really doing it. And I want them to know I appreciate uh, those in the cabinet in particular for the work that they are doing. <laughs> Sister Bookman has some letters that she has for my review uh, and signature uh, that we will be giving to the vice presidents and some other uh, executive uh, cabinet leaders because after our retreat uh, up in Louisville, and I'm proud to say at our own retreat center, Amen. We, spent, we spent an evening and two days uh, at our own retreat centers uh, discussing some of the issues that we believe are important for the future of this convention. We are gonna be about more uh, than meeting, eating, and greeting. As a matter of fact, we already are. But there are some adjustments we need to make uh, for us to speed up the process of us being a more global convention uh, that is seeking to serve congregations. And so we have uh, everything in the convention uh, is under one of the executive officers, starting with our vice president at large, uh, and all of our vice presidents, our treasurer, general secretary, uh, and even others in our cabinet. Uh, and we're trying now to move towards, for example, auxiliaries. And we want to thank God for these auxiliary leaders uh, who are present. Why don't y'all just stand if you feel like you don't have to be there. I should have known if I said it, Sister Barbara was going to stand too. But I want to thank God for these auxiliary leaders too. Our auxiliaries, if I remember correctly, their vice president is uh, Pastor W.T. Glenn. Uh, he's the vice president for auxiliaries. They will be reporting directly to him and not so much directly to me. Uh, nobody can manage all of that. They make us feel good, people coming to us, making us think they can't do without us. Haul off and die, and you'll see. That. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Uh, boards, our board secretary, treasurers, and chairpersons, I don't see many of them in here, but if they're here, any of them, would you please stand? 
Maybe uh, some of them. Uh, the Reverend Frank Garden of Tennessee, uh, the Vice President, those are under uh, his supervision uh, to help us with the work. Uh, just uh, a couple of weeks ago, I could not be in Louisville for a breakfast at Simmons College that I think was very important, uh, but because of the death of the father of our General Secretary, who was my deacon, I needed to be with the family. Yeah. Uh, and I've learned as president, I'm pastor first. Yeah. yeah, I got to be pastor first. And so I called Reverend Frank Garland, uh, who's vice president of boards, and Reverend Delbert Brown, who's secretary of treasurer of the college and seminary board that's tied to Simmons College, and asked them to go in my place. Uh, and I want you to know there was no hesitation, and they were glad to go. And uh, Reverend Delbert Brown's not in here yet. I wanted to. And the reason I'm bringing it out, Reverend Devil got so excited that I asked him to go, he went up there and gave $10,000 to Simmons. <laughs> so I'm glad the Spirit led me to call him. I was trying to see if he was in here this morning for the offering. Uh, but, uh, I, and that's the kind of commitment we have throughout the convention. And I want to publicly acknowledge uh, what uh, Dr. Garden and uh, Delbert Brown did in representing us uh, from the boards. What about commissions? Are there any commission members? Would you please stand? Commission leaders. Uh, they are under the right reverend. <laughs> and that's all I have to say. Y'all know who the right reverend is. He gave himself a nickname this morning. Uh, and of course, uh, I'm going by memory, but I know that the registration, uh, the budget committee, and what else? He said, that's it, and I think it was, yeah, cap. That's under our treasurer, Dr. F.D. Sampson. All of this is in writing. We're gonna get the letters to them and to the groups uh, so that they'll be able to keep up with it. We're going to make active our statistician, uh, Reverend J. Raw Morrison of Florida. Amen. Why don't you stand up so they'll know who you are? All right. He's gonna start keeping up with data. Uh, and stand there while, are there any state presidents present in here this morning? Got one just walked in? Oh yeah, Reverend Mabry, all right. And we have Reverend Dixon, we have several up here. Uh, some out there in New Jersey, Mississippi, Louisiana, New Mexico, Alabama, Tennessee, Florida. And we have others who are here, but not in here. We're trying to get Delbert Brown, I just acknowledged that you gave $10,000 to Simmons College. Stand, sir. I mean, we don't just need to not acknowledge that. All right? I want to thank you. And if you're in that kind of spirit this morning when the offering comes, you're welcome. But Reverend, uh, you're sitting down here. Reverend uh, J. Raw Morrison uh, will be communicating with you, Brother President, as well as Sister Bookman. We're trying to get statistical data on the convention. We do have 4,000 churches if we count churches in these state conventions. But we don't have the data. And he's going to be talking to you all about uh, us getting that your mailing list from your convention. We're not going to distribute that to other people. But there are some projects that we're working on. For example, like I went to D.C. I have to be able to substantiate how many churches we have. Uh, so that we could probably have leverage to get this money. Amen. You know, I'm talking all big, the best buy. Y'all saw that letter last night? Amen. Yeah, perpetrating and everything. But I need some statistics yeah. to back up what I'm saying. Yeah. So when I ask uh, you to give that to him, that's the reason so that we can have, if, if there are 200 churches in the North Mississippi, and I'm just using the number, I don't know, we need to have them on our mailing list in National Baptist, a part of our data. And you will hear about that more today as you hear from some of the professionals that we have hired to help us take this convention to another level. Amen. You cannot do it without statistical data. So this gentleman uh, is going to become crucial to the future of the convention in gathering data. When y'all see him, y'all call him Reverend Data now. And please, Brother President, I would appreciate it if you could help us. And we've talked about it briefly on conference calls and others. Opportunities. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Dr. Sampson has been working diligently on our CAP program, and um, 
He's been working real good on offerings. Y'all say amen. amen. But we are yet seeking some additional ways to make things better for NBCA and to make it more efficient. And we want to share with you some of those things this morning. As we prepare to venture into that, I do want to state that the minutes of our uh, meeting, uh, our last meeting, uh, were publicized. They were e-blasted out and placed on the website for your review. And at this time, I need to entertain a motion uh, for the adoption of our previous meeting minutes. It's been moved by uh, Reverend J. Rod Morrison and Reverend F. D. Sampson, uh, and second by Reverend Alexander of Alabama, that our minutes of our previous meeting would be adopted. Are there any questions or corrections? If not, all in favor, vote by saying aye. All opposed, the ayes have it, and so the minutes are adopted, and it's very important that we have adopted minutes uh, for our records. Uh, there are some recommendations that I need to make this morning as it relates to some of our uh, vacant offices, um, and I want to do that at this time, and then there may be a couple of more names before the end of the board meeting Wednesday night. Uh, I'm still waiting on a couple of uh, persons to get back with me. We do want to recognize the service of the late sister Susan Turner, one of our vice presidents of our mission. And I know that some of the senior women are wearing black today. And I think it is a way to continue to acknowledge her work with us, and I'm going to ask them just to stand uh, who are participating in that. Um, amen. Amen. Under the leadership of their president, Sister Barbara Wright. What I want you to do now, we don't pray for the dead, but we will have a moment of silence in acknowledgement of Sister uh, Susan Turner's work, and then I will move forward with the recommendations. What I've done, I have worked with the Senior Women's Auxiliary Leader, uh, Sister Barbara Wright, who we've been praying for, and we ought to tell God thank you. Amen. She's been desperately ill in treatment, but you look at her and you can see what the Lord has done. We just, we just praise God uh, for his sustaining power. And I've asked her for recommendations, and these recommendations now become my recommendations to the convention uh, for consideration. And that is that the third vice president, which is Sister Carrie Moore, will you stand right here? From Kansas City, Kansas. I won't go say Missouri. Uh, she will be recommended to move up to the second vice president of our senior women's auxiliary from Kansas. Sister Jewel Bailey is in here. Sister Jewel Bailey uh, will be recommended to be the third vice president from Mississippi. The financial secretary, I don't know if she's here, Ms. Turner. Uh, sister Stella Turner, which is the sister of Sister Susan Turner uh, in Mississippi, will be recommended as the financial secretary. Uh, and the editor for the Turning Point newsletter is Sister Carol Lewis of Mississippi. I know I saw her. Where are you, Miss Carol? Oh, right over here. All right? And as I do this, I also, and I thought about it when I saw that Turning Point, it had slipped my mind about, um, now you know I know Sister Thurman, Sister Shirley. Sister Shirley Thurman uh, passed away from Mississippi. Uh, she had a lot to do with this turning point newsletter. She did an excellent job with it uh, for many years. And uh, she's a member of the Tabernacle Baptist Church. Dr. Kenneth Maurice Davis, pastor, she's passed away. Uh, and we want to remember her work also. Uh, 
So these are the recommendations for the senior women auxiliary. And so since I'm working on them to help the secretaries keep good records, I would entertain a motion to uh, accept these recommendations. Amen. Yes, it's been moved by Sister Barbara Wright of Florida, second by the Reverend S.C. Dixon of Baton Rouge, that the recommendations I just read for the Senior Women's Auxiliary would be adopted. Are there any questions? All in favor? Vote by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it, and so uh, these officers have been adopted. It, do you have another one of these sheets? Okay, good. I'll give this to the Secretary. Dr. Oscar Moses of Illinois, of Chicago, has had to step down as president uh, of our uh, pastor's conference. Uh, he has some personal things that he's dealing with. Uh, he called me, we had a very good conversation. He's still with the convention. He just needs to step aside for now. He's been very cooperative in the transition and making sure that whatever they needed for this meeting was done but he has some things that he needs to do at this time. And so I would like to recommend uh, the Reverend Lalius Johnson of Dallas, Texas, who was the vice president, all right, uh, that he would become the president of the pastor's conference. They already have a treasurer, which is Reverend F.D. Sampson, Junior, so he's already in office. Uh, but not to speed up and make any errors, I'm going to give Reverend Johnson some time to take his time between 9 and June to get me a recommended slate of offices. I kind of like people to have people that they can work with um, other than just, uh, I've made some errors before in that vein and I don't want to make any more. Put some people with some people and then they needed a boxing ring. So Reverend Johnson, if you would do that, uh, we would appreciate it. And so that's my recommendation at this point that he would become the president of the pastor's conference. And I would entertain a motion to, uh, to uh, approve that. All right, been moved by Reverend Scobie of Oklahoma. That's almost a tongue twister. And second back here by New Jersey. What's your name again? Yeah, Bethea uh, of New Jersey. Uh, that the motion would be uh, adopted. Are there any questions? All in favor, vote by saying aye. aye. All opposed? The ayes have it, and so it is adopted. In addition to that, is Reverend Blanton Harper present? Yes. While he's standing, I would like to acknowledge the work, uh, service, uh, and faithfulness of the late Dr. Mallory Callahan, uh, who was the President of Louisiana Home and Foreign Missions Baptist State Convention, and in addition to that, he was the Secretary Treasurer of our Insurance and Annuity Board. Uh, he has passed away, uh, and um, we thank God for his service. Uh, the Reverend Blanton Harper had served as Chairman uh, of the Insurance and Annuity Board. You know, in NBCA, the Secretary Treasurer kind of runs it, and the Chairman presides and supports the work. And I've asked Reverend Blanton Harper uh, to move up uh, to the position of Secretary Treasurer of the Insurance Annuity Board. And by June, uh, he would get to me some recommendations for the other officers uh, in that group. Uh, he is a licensed insurance agent, and we were trying to find him a licensed uh, insurance agent uh, to serve as chairman. We haven't been able to do that yet, but. He will help us get that by, by June uh, for our uh, board meeting, summer board meeting in the Congress. So you've heard that recommendation by an insurance and annuity board. Uh, at this time, I will entertain a motion for adoption. Been moved by Reverend uh, Robert Alexander of Alabama and second by Reverend J. Rod Morrison of Florida that the motion uh, would be adopted. Are there any questions? All in favor, vote by saying aye. aye. All opposed? The ayes have it, and so it is ordered. So uh, we just had a lot of practice on voting. 
Every now and then we need to go through that little process. Because we are Baptists, you know. Amen. You can object too, you know. It's just when I recommend something, if you object, you're going to be outvoted. But anyway. <laughs> I said I've been at my church 35 years. And no motion that I have put on the floor at Greater St. Mary in 35 years has ever failed. Y'all want to know how to do that? I don't put one on that I think is going to fail. <laughs> and you know, that's kind of crazy. You know it's going to fail, and you're going to take yourself through that. That might be a lesson to a young pastor. Sometimes you got to wait a while and bring the same motion back up put some new adjectives and adverbs in the motion, and they come and they vote say, God, did we for this. <laughs> Same thing I said the last four years ago, but I don't put motions. I had a, a situation where we were trying to buy a, a, a Greyhound bus, a reconditioned Greyhound bus, Reverend uh, Ghana, and uh, we had the bus out there at church that Sunday, out there in the driveway, the man drove it down, and I told him, you know, Turn it on, put the air on so people can go see it after church. Yeah. And uh, the people went out there, and they went on the bus, they come back out. I said, how you like it? Oh. <laughs> it's a bus. <laughs> and then they looked a while, and one guy came back and said, uh, the toilet broke. Said, okay, the toilet broke, and it's a bus. And then one of the older ladies climbed up on it. And she said, this is cold as the air conditioning yet. <laughs> and the man said, it's running on full speed. So the deacon, a couple of them came in the office and said, well, Rev, what are we going to do? We're going to have a meeting about getting the bus. I said, oh, no. We're not going to. I recommend we don't get this bus. <laughs> no. I knew that wasn't going to pass. You've got to know if it's not going to pass, leave it alone. Don't divide the church over foolishness. Amen. Now, if it's a biblical principle, I take a stand on that. But a bus? Who around and have the bus and reduce the church to a size where you can put all the members on the bus? <laughs> What I would like to do at this time is to have, is Sister Kyle Harrison in the building? Yes. Are we ready to preview the new website? Okay, so let's do that. We'll get it ready and hopefully we'll launch it before we leave here if things, you know, it's technology. Uh, but we will launch the new website. And I just want her to come and preview it right quick. Well, I got a thing right here. Reverend Kemp got a screen up here. What's on here is up there, right? Good. It's up there, right? Y'all see that? A global convention that serves congregate. Am I previewing? I'm not the one previewing it. Miss Kyle, you need to come preview it. Yeah. Miss Kyle Harrison is our NBC executive director for the press and working with marketing. She's been doing a lot of this work in conjunction with uh, the Success Training Institute that has helped us to, to do some redesign of the website. So I guess they can hear you back there. Okay. Can you hear me? Good morning. Good morning. So as Rep. President Tauber was stating, one of the things that we have done is as our convention grows, our original website was designed to be informative. So it was very simple. It was simple by design. So you could just log on, get your information, and then go do whatever you have to do. Now that the convention is growing, we wanted to make sure that it's more than just a website. Now it's actually a learning management platform. So as, as informative as it is, you'll be able to see that you can take classes and other things that you can do. Um, so on the home page, um, can you scroll to About Us to the left or to the right for me? You can't scroll? Okay. Oh, she can get it that one page. Well, I tell you what, when it launched, I need y'all to do something for me. Individually, 
preview the website. I mean, if the technology is not working right now, we're not going to take up a whole lot of time. But we do have a website uh, that is a bit more user friendly. It's more than just information for us. And there are some online learning platforms that are now attached to the NBCA website, especially in the area of soft skills training. You would be able to go online to the website uh, and take soft skills training like for conflict management, leadership development, a whole list of courses that are listed there on the website. So hopefully, when will we launch this website? Within the next week. Within, Within the next week. Time. So let's say today is what? So by next Wednesday, the website will be up in this phone. Okay? I give them a week and a day. Grace. All right. Uh, as we talk about that, I want to bring up now a young man, and I've talked about them a little bit, Halo Media, yeah. uh, Brother Tyler Anderson, uh, who is one of the five young people that started this company. Uh, Tyler is a member of the St. Stephen Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky. He has been an excellent help for me for the last two or three years as I've gone to Louisville trying to present things. And so I think you can, I think that mic works right there. And uh, it's the Halo Media uh, PowerPoint. I don't know if somebody see me back there. It's the Halo Media one, all right? Uh, and Tyler, he will, he will introduce this because we've got to find a way to get the word out about what we're doing, not only to our constituents, but to other people in the world. Yeah. And that's what they have been charged to do by the executive committee uh, that took my recommendation and approved them when we were in Louisville, uh, Kentucky for our time together. So I think they're getting it up now. Start saying something, Tyler. <laughs> well, thank you, President Tolbert. Um, thank you to the executive cabinet. Is that good? Can you all hear me? All right, thank you, President Tolbert. Thank you to the executive cabinet for having me and thank you to each of you um, for welcoming to the uh, Midwinter Board. Um, as President Tolbert said, my name is Tyler Anderson and I serve as the Chief Operating Officer of Halo Media. Um, as he said, I'm a proud member of an NBCA church in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church where Reverend Dr. Kevin W. Cosby is the pastor. Um, we're in the home um, of the Kentucky Derby of Muhammad Ali and now the home of the National Baptist Convention of America. Halo Media, um, I want to talk a little bit briefly about what Halo Media is. Halo Media is a company that's really founded and grounded on Christian values and principles. If you'll go to the next slide, what you'll see um, is a statement that we've coined as our statement that we believe in, that we're good people um, and that we do good work. A lot of agencies that you run into across the country that are marketing agencies are really agencies that are just there to get your money and then they run. We're dedicated to our clients and we feel like every client that you talk to of ours, you will understand that we are really good people. We're gonna help you through every step of the way. If we're at a convention and you have a question about how to use Facebook, we're gonna help you and we're not gonna send you a bill for it. So we're really good people um, and we think that we do great work. Um, so a little bit about us, if you'll go to the next slide, um, is that we're a multimedia marketing agency um, and we, we kind of wrap our services into three areas. Um, video and audio production, which is your commercials, your testimonial videos, um, anything that you can think of that you record something, streaming services, things like that. Digital marketing, which is your websites, your mobile applications, social media management, um, and reputation management, um, where we can monitor what people are saying about the convention and what they're, um, what they're willing to share about the convention, and we can propel that to another level. Um, and finally, graphics and design. So everything from your flyers, your stationery, um, anything you can think of printed wise. And one of the things about Halo is that we're able to conceptualize from the beginning phase to the end phase of printing or wherever the medium um, is going to. If we can go to the next slide. Um, this is our mission. Our mission is to lead innovation through quality media that enhances brands. As a company, we believe that everybody has some form of a brand. You have your own set of core values, you have your own set of beliefs, you have your own set of missions that you hold dear to you. 
that's simply what a brand is. It's, it's an identifiable um, thing that you have. Um, and we're just here to enhance that brand as much as we can. So um, as an agency, um, if we'll go to the next slide, um, these are our leaders. Um, myself, Dr. Christine Cosby, Gaither, Terrence Randolph, Kevin Cosby, and Janice Cosby. Um, I wish Dr. Christine Cosby could have been here. Um, we had to play a little audible. Um, if you'll keep Dr. Christine Cosby in your prayer, she had a stroke um, a few months ago. So she's on the mend, she is recovering, um, and she's doing very well. So if you could please keep her in your prayers. Um, we're hoping to have her back in June, July area. Um, I know we miss her, but um, as I said, keep her in your prayers. But this is our team. These are the kind of people that you can call on, that you have access to whenever you need them. And if you'll go um, to the next slide, this is who we are. We are the only millennial-owned marketing company in Louisville, Kentucky. And we are also one of two minority-owned agencies in Kentucky. Um, so we have a unique trait um, in Kentucky as being millennial and minority-owned. So if you wrap all of that into one, we are the only millennial and minority-owned agency. Uh, now the next slide, these are our services that we've um, kind of wrapped into a few things. Um, and all of this is accessible on our website, halo.com. Um, if you'll note the spelling, because it's spelled a little weird. Uh, but advertising, app and web development, branding and strategy, direct marketing, so your email blast. So when Dr. Tober was talking about statistics and data, that's kind of one of the most important things, is collecting that data so we can reach out to you and that we can share this information to a mass group of people. Experiential marketing, so getting people to experience your product, your convention through experiences, going places, um, and sharing through trade shows and things such as that. Multicultural marketing, um, there are a lot of growing cultures. Um, that we can all reach. Hispanic community is a, is a growing community. Um, so we can find ways to channel your marketing to specific cultures. Um, public relations, um, one of our clients is um, Simmons College of Kentucky, and I don't know if you all have seen their NBA, NBA TV story, um, but it was a story that NBA TV produced that was about an 18 minute documentary that eventually went on to be shown on CBS's March Madness in 2016. That was a product of some PR work that we did. Um, so I like telling that story because it started as a very micro um, item of uh, just a simple press release that we sent out. Um, and it grew, and it grew to something really national and global. Um, and it actually, get, somebody gave money to Simmons College. Um, and then social media management, I've talked briefly about that. Next slide, please. Uh, we met with the um, National Baptist Convention, um, the leadership team, um, in January 8th. Um, and when we met with them, um, they moved to make Halo Media the official marketing agency of the National Baptist Convention, and we are super excited about that. Um, and we're gonna share with you some um, of the things that we're doing. Right now we're brainstorming new and innovative ways leading up to Congress that we can really market the convention to a wider audience. Next slide, please. Go ahead and go on. And go on one more. So this is kind of our process that we're thinking of um, moving forward, is reimagining, recruiting, retaining, and regaining. So the first step, if you'll go to the next slide, we met, when we met with the executive cabinet, we asked these two questions. What do you think of when you think of NBCA? And what would you like to think of when you think of NBCA? And they gave us a lot of great words. And, but we want you to have some input as well. Um, so if you have a pen, if you have a paper, um, write down this email address, because we want your input on this. The email is info, I-N-F-O, at halo. And it's spelled weird, H-A-A. Y L O info at halo.com. Share with us some of your thoughts. What do you think of when you think of NBCA? And what would you like to think of when you think of NBCA? Some of the things that they gave us were world changers. Um, they want to reach out to millennials. And so what we do is we take these words, we take these ideas, and we, we use them when we develop our strategies. Uh, go to the next slide, please. So these are our goals um, when it comes to reimagining NBCA garnering national attention for NBCA wider than what it already is. So NBCA um, 
is, is, a, is a, it's a global convention. So what we're going to do is we're going to reimagine ways that we can even push that even further. What are some techniques? What are some strategies that we can put in place? There's so much power in social media that we can literally target a specific area. Even we can target a specific church. So pastors, if you see something that looks really specific to you, it probably was. Um, so there's some, so many things that we can do to garner, garner national attention for the NBCA. The next thing we want to do is market the retreat center. We're, I live in Louisville, Kentucky, and I've been to the retreat center several times. And that is one of the most beautiful spaces that I've seen anywhere. Um, and so really marketing that to make money for the convention, weddings and things such as that. Um, building up of the NBCA brand, what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate the brand. We're going to look at what we're doing good, what we're not doing great, um, and what are ways that we can, we can leverage what we're doing good and what are the ways we can fix um, the ways that we're not doing well. And sharing the good works of NBCA. NBCA does so many good things. And as I'm around, as I'm learning, NBCA is blowing my mind with the great things um, that the mission board is doing um, and things like that. Next slide, please. The next phase is recruiting. Um, and you can go to the next slide. One of the first things we're going to do is an NBCA awareness campaign. Um, and the theme we're calling NBCA Strong. So what we really want you to do with this is to get excited about the National Baptist Convention. I know you're already excited, but we want to get you even more excited. Um, and we want to expose you um, to what NBCA offers. NBCA has several services. Um, and because you're here, I'm sure you're aware of it, but there are some churches that just don't know what's going on with NBCA, that don't know kind of what the great services that NBCA offers. Um, and then we're going to start a membership campaign um, that's going to um, give you reasons and give you um, tools to recruit other members to be a part. Uh, and then finally, um, it's the NBCA month for all affiliated churches. And if you'll go to the next slide, we kind of break it down a little bit more. Um, we're calling this NBCA Strong Month. Um, and we're, our idea is to do it in June of 2019 because that's leading up to Congress. Um, so what we want you to do is during this month, we want you to encourage NBCA members, um, we want you to encourage your friends, your family members, anybody you can think of to give a gift to the CAP campaign. Um, I know that CAP is an important campaign, um, and so show your NBCA pride um, by giving to that campaign. Uh, one of the, the, the good ideas that um, actually Dr. Christine Cosby had um, was let's do an NBCA Worldwide Day of Service and let's get t-shirts. So what we're going to do during this month is we're going to challenge each church to get together and figure out what forms of community services that we want to do. Um, and then the, the attention that this would get, we'll send out a press release um, to local medias in the areas that the churches are doing this. Um, and, we'll sh and we'll push it out. And the media attention that we believe that this will garner will be on a global scale. We believe that this can get on um, a Today Show and ABC News. Um, and this can grow and expand to so much more. And we can begin to show the awesome things that NBCA is doing to a worldwide audience. Um, and then a pastor to pastor recruitment. Um, what we want each pastor to do is to at least recruit one person. Nobody knows other pastors like other pastors. Um, and so as a pastor, we want you to really take pride in NBCA and really encourage another pastor to be a part of the National Baptist Convention. And then as a, as a kind of a result of all of this, um, is we want to increase registration in Congress. Congress is a big meeting, um, and we need as many people that we can get at Congress. If you'll go to the next slide. So when we recruit, um, do the recruitment of, of the pastors, um, one of the things we're going to ask each state president to do is to host a pastor's recruitment luncheon for potential pastors. Um, so President Tolbert likely can't get to that. Uh, we don't want to put too much on President Tolbert. Um, but what we can do is we can shoot a video with President Tolbert and get it to you so that you can share it with the other presidents of that, uh, to the state presidents, um, and you can share with potential pastors. Um, and then um, another thing is a social media campaign on why to join NBCA. Um, through social media blasts, through email blasts, um, that we can get, um, and videos that we can push out 
um, to larger bodies through targeted ads and things such as that. Um, and then there are some churches that have fallen off, that haven't been to an event, um, that haven't been to a meeting in over two plus years. Those are kind of uh, what we call the low hanging fruit. Those are the people that have been invested in NBCA in the past that we could probably get back to NBCA um, and get recommitted to the convention. Um, and what we do is we supply the tools um, to help people really understand what the importance of NBCA is deeper than just a face-to-face -face conversation. Uh, and then during um, Congress, um, what we hope to do is to have an orientation with every pastor that becomes a member during that year, um, to have a meeting with them so that they can get oriented um, into what everything is in BCA. Next slide, please. Um, the next thing is retain. Um, and all of this is a continuation all together. So once we get to the recruiting phase, um, that's kind of a that's kind of a thing that we all we have to always be doing is recruiting people um, and retaining people. So these are kind of our ideas on how to retain people. Um, distribution of a video collage. We want to highlight all of the great things that are happening at every uh, meeting, um, at every Congress meeting. We want to share kind of what all we're doing and let people see it, so that when they see it, they're thinking they're missing out on what is actually going on. Um, and so. Through all of this, what we want to encourage is pre-registration for upcoming events. So what that does is when people pre-register, it gives cash flow to the convention so they're not wondering if they're going to have enough money to pay for this meeting. They're already going to have that money and we don't have to worry about um, that payment. Uh, and then social media posts, um, so posting quotes from amazing things that preachers say, taking a picture of the preacher, putting a nice graphic together um, and talking about uh, what they just said. And then NBC Air promotional items, giving you stuff to wear um, so that when people walk around, get an NBCA hat and wear it. So you're the greatest billboard for the National Baptist Convention. So putting an NBCA logo on a t-shirt, on a, on a hat, um, on, a, on a travel mug, we're going to put NBCA in as many places as we can. One of the other things that we wanted to do is we wanted to get a door sticker for every NBCA church so that when people walk through the front door of your church, they know that this is a National Baptist Convention of America church. Um, and we begin to identify NBCA. Um, and then marketing the partnership and the, and the benefits. I've said this uh, more times uh, probably than I should because, but it's true. NBCA is doing so many great things for churches, for pastors, and for congregants. And we can go to the next slide, and I think that's it. Um, and then the next slide, um, as I close, I, um, I just think as a, as a result of all of this marketing, NBCA will begin to regain everything that it's lost over the years, regain membership, regain churches, regain confidence, and become the, the greatest convention to ever um, kind of step into the Baptist um, thing. And, and I know you already believe it, but there's so much that we can do together. Thank you all so much for your time. Thank you, President Tobin. Thank you very much, Tyler. Tyler has been around Dr. Cosby so long until you heard him say, as I close. <laughs> Tyler will be here um, uh, after our break. He has to get back to Louisville this afternoon. I think uh, he'll leave here about 1.30 or so. So he'll be around if you have some one-on-one -on -one questions that you want to ask or some input you want to give because he is not, and Halo is not the president's media group. They are NBCA. They are your, our media group. And he wants uh, uh, as much input as he can get to make this convention greater. I feel that I had maxed out on me being able to market the convention. You got to know when you're at your limit. And sometimes we can't get help because we think we don't need it. And I'm up hollering help. And thank God for Halo Media. You can see they've already done a lot of work since our meeting in January when the executive cabinet, uh, vice presidents, and all of us were there. They took the input and look what they've come up with already. So we know we're on our way somewhere. The second uh, presenter that I would like to get in, uh, we're getting close to that 10.30 where we're going to have to break, is Brother Philip uh, Smith. Uh, Philip will come. He's from Baton Rouge. 
uh, Louisiana with Diversified Advancement Consultants. Uh, the executive committee uh, voted to uh, hire him to help us raise money. Hello, somebody. <laughs> because we've been trying it, and it's not where it needs to be. Uh, and he's going to work primarily uh, in three areas, and he'll tell you about those areas. Uh, he is the vice president of advancement for Baton Rouge Community College, so they pay him every day to do this. <laughs> and he has done it for Southern University when we really broke out and started raising money at Southern. He was the brain behind it. And they took him over to the community college because they needed that asset, and now we're bringing him in the NBCA. Brother Philip Smith. Reverend Talbot, uh, thank you for having me, executive committee as well, thank you. And all thank you for um, being here this morning and, and having me here. Reverend Talbot, I'm not sure how you know that story, but it's a true story, what you just said about Southern University and Baton Rouge Community College. Um, so it's amazing just to sit and, and uh, witness this today and see uh, the impact that the convention has across the country and across the world. Um, and as I sit in this, in, this, in this church, and I look at the number of seats and the number of people here, how many lives are impacted by the work that you do? Um, and I don't know if you all think about it that way day to day, but the influence is tremendous. And for people to know about that impact, uh, the brand building that Tyler's talking about, uh, is what will cause folks to want to support what you do. Um, so, again, my name is Philip Smith. I currently serve as Vice Chancellor for Advancement at Baton Rouge Community College, Executive Director of the Foundation. There also, uh, prior to that, worked at Southern University System Foundation as Advancement Director. Uh, and so we'll go to a slide. I'm not sure if you all have the presentation available. Um, I also was at the meeting January 8th. Uh, in Louisville and uh, had the opportunity to present before the executive committee and, and met Tyler and his company there that day. Um, we came from two different worlds. He's in the marketing business. I'm in the fundraising business. But our presentations were almost identical with the exception of the areas where he went into deeper areas of marketing and I went to deeper areas of fundraising. Uh, brand building is an important part of garnering support for what you do. So once you've built that solid brand uh, beyond what you've already done, the work you've done, uh, you'll find not only individuals, but corporations that will be willing to support the work uh, based upon what they're able to see. And I think that Reverend Talbert and the committee having the uh, wisdom to bring uh, uh, these two areas of focus together at the same time uh, by design uh, was very interesting. I, I was not aware that that was happening, but it, it's a perfect, perfect scenario uh, at this time. So next slide, please. Um, again, my name is Philip Smith. A little bit about my background. I don't like talking about myself much, so we're going to skip that slide. I've told you enough about that. Um, so the areas of focus uh, for us are donor services, civic engagement, and strategic consulting services. And that's a capstone of, of what I'm here to do. Um, one, dealing with individuals, dealing with corporations, other organizations, and foundations. Uh, civic engagement. Um, we talked about the, um, uh, the day of service. Um, that type of civic engagement and community engagement uh, is a way to show uh, your work, and people will see that and want to support you and to create strategies to surround that. And so with the broadness of this organization, uh, it's very easy to just ask people to give. Uh, but we want to do this in a strategic way. And we want to do this in a way where it's effective. And so that's what we're here to do. Next slide. The opportunities that exist um, are the CAP Fund, there's no reason uh, to have Reverend Talbert to call and ask for uh, $10,000 uh, uh, that's needed for operations or things that need to be done. Um, and so if he's calling to make that ask, we want to ask other 
external organizations to help support that. And so the CAP fund is just that, one that will allow um, the president and the organization to carry out the business of the convention. And without that, um, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're not necessarily striving and, and reaching out, but we're always looking for ways to fund different projects. It's my job to basically create that fund, and that's going to be done through the CAP fund. Again, it's already been established, but we just want to put some structure around it to make it uh, effective and organized such that each year we know exactly what we're dealing with. Capital campaign. The retreat center is absolutely phenomenal. Just the space there and the land that's, that exists there. And the opportunity is, is phenomenal as well. Capital campaign will start out with uh, a way to help to redevelop that property and to make it uh, to be all what it can be. Um, capital cam campaign opportunities don't only exist for the retreat center. Uh, but also, uh, as you know, everyone's always in the process of building and rebuilding. And, and so there are a lot of strategies that will come out of this that you will uh, be able to utilize at your own churches as well. Special projects, um, we've talked about, we're hearing about on the website, leadership training that's available, uh, Leadership Academy. We have a publishing uh, house. Uh, there are always special projects that will come up from time to time that can help support um, the national office as well. And then plan giving. Um, you've already um, engaged a company that is um, very you know, proficient in terms of handling estate planning, uh, but making the connection with that company is something that we'll work to do as well because what uh, that means is that whether it's a, a bequest, which would be a um, a gift of a piece of, of property or whatever it may be, uh, they're professionals that will have to help structure that, but we have to make that connection for them, and so that's what we'll help you do as well. Next slide. And I'm not sure if you can click, can you click on that um, fundraising strategy? Okay, well, if not, that's fine. Um, basically, the strategy uh, consists of um, working towards a mission-focused uh, organization in terms of fundraising. And that would be recruiting volunteers, training volunteers, recruiting external stoke, stake, stakeholders, and also leadership from the executive committee. Um, and that leads into increasing what I call annual gifts to the capital fund increasing endowment gifts, increasing plan giving gifts, um, increasing assets uh, that exist, and that is accomplished through the brand building. That is comp accomplished through technology. It's accomplished through strategies uh, to help direct dollars to specific funds, including the missions as well. And so every day the focus will be about executing those things um, and, and being that mission-focused organization. And that's what the strategy, strategy map consists of. Uh, annual giving, and I'm going to skip through this in the set for the sake of time, but the CAP fund is an annual giving fund, is what that is. And so it's designated to create recurring support for the national office each and every year. And so once we start this, it's something that will recur and we'll re-execute the strategy again and again. That base of support will help others to start to engage as well beyond that. Who will lead us? It will be internally with the president and executive committee, and also externally with myself. And uh, the job, of course, is to, to raise dollars for uh, the national office, the CAP fund, and to be accountable to the organization. And why give to the National Baptist Convention of America? What is our case for support? Why us, why now, why the donor, and what are the emotional triggers that will connect donors to our mission? And so, on the, the next slide, please. On the right of that, you'll see at this point, and through Tyler's work as well, this mission statement, our, our case for support, will develop. 
but the National Baptist Convention of America is a fellowship of national and international African American Baptist churches and congregations who serve to promote and support education and Christian missions. Our vision is to positively impact and influence the spiritual, educational, social, and economic conditions for all people. It is our work through missions and church extensions that we impact all communities and future generations throughout the world. That's a powerful statement when you think about it, the work that you do each and every day. And so we need to be able to tell this story and make our case for support. Um, our groups, next slide, that uh, will help to support this initiative are the associations, state conventions, uh, congregations of member churches, uh, friends, business and industry. The strategy uh, that you heard earlier in terms of asking friends and people that you know to help support this CAP campaign is exactly uh, what we intend to do. Again, uh, Tyler and I didn't know each other before January 8th, but we had the same exact strategy and the same timeline as well. Next slide. And so let's do the math on this. What is it going to take? And it's not going to take much to do this. Our first goal will be to raise close to a half million dollars for operations. Um, not a, a daunting task, not a, a large ask. Um, and as you can see based upon the chart, can you go to the next slide? It'll only take 415 gifts to do that at different levels. And when you think about the number of individuals that are already a part of this organization, number of member churches, number of influences that we know in the United States and around, 415 gifts to basically run the operations of the national office so that those calls aren't being made on, on, on a not so frequent basis. Um, and so we understand what it takes to do that and uh, we'll set up a strategy to, to pursue this and, um, and I'm sure we'll reach our goal. Next slide, please. I'm gonna skip through the communications piece. Uh, again, this is, this is where Tyler um, uh, has covered a lot of that, but if you can go to one more slide for me, and I see Reverend Talbot's ready to uh, move forward. But this is, no, back one, sorry. All right, so this is where we are. Um, and we've talked about uh, the campaign calendar. What we intend to do is that right now we're preparing, we're getting lists and information and data, um, and in June we'll kick off the campaign. Um, and we'll need each and every one of you to help uh, participate in this. One, by supporting the campaign itself, and then asking um, others to do the same. So we look forward to working with you. Thank you, Reverend Talbot, again, and thank you, Executive Committee, for having us. Thank you very much, Brother Philip. <laughs> Philip will also be here uh, maybe an hour or so after this session. He's here for any one-on-one -on -one questions that you may have, but he's going to help us to raise money, get some corporate sponsors uh, for our meeting. Meeting expenses are very high. Amen. Uh, I've shared with you all before that the screens that are in this church and the microphones, when we go to a hotel to do that, that's at least $25,000 for those three or four days to have a mic and some screens. And so thank you, Dr. Kim. Because we don't have that expense this week. Uh, quickly, I need to do three things. We need to get our brother David Harris is here from the Heritage Endowment. This is all connected. I'm going to ask that he would come. You heard uh, Philip talking about endowed giving, uh, and this is what David Harris's company, Heritage, has been secured to do, and they've already started that work. While he's coming, uh, the Senior Women's Annual Field Missionary Conference is in Louisville, Kentucky, May 24th through May 26th. Uh, that's under the leadership of our Senior Women's President, uh, Dr. Barbara Wright see them for more information. I guess they have some more of these flyers or envelopes available for you. Notice they're going to Louisville. They're going to support Simmons College and our headquarters. Isn't that wonderful? In addition to that, while David is coming, I want to ask that the Reverend Delbert Mack, I just saw him somewhere in my class. 
Yes, Reverend Deborah Mack, would you please stand? The pastor of the Cathedral <coughs> Faith Baptist Church of Beaumont, Texas, which is a growing and thriving church. Uh, and he will remain standing to Reverend William Watson of Jackson, Tennessee. Where's William? He's over here, all right? Another young man that's a new, uh, newer pastor. He's been with us about three years, went with us to Israel. Uh, his brother was a member of my church. Uh, who was the Coast Guard command in our area, and he told the Coast Guard commander, commanded his brother, you get in the convention with my pastor. But uh, I've asked them to take over the leadership of the Church Growth and Development Board. The Reverend Delbert Mack would be the Secretary Treasurer, and the Reverend William Watson of Tennessee would be the chairman. And they're gonna work details out and get some other people. That's my recommendation. I wanna receive a motion to accept that recommendation to elect him. All right. It's been moved by Reverend S.D. Dixon of Louisiana, second by Reverend Robert Alexander of Alabama. Uh, that the, oh, it was Frank Garden. You sounded like Alabama. <laughs> Reverend Frank Garden of Tennessee, second. Uh, are you ready for the question? All in favor, vote by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, the ayes have it, so it is ordered. You're next in line. This will be our final presentation. Um, Good morning. morning. Giving honor to God and to President Tolbert and to the board and leadership and to all the pastors and individuals who are present this morning. I'm not going to go ahead and give a slide presentation this morning. Uh, I'm looking at it. Uh, Dr. Tolbert, you gave me a little short window there. I, I appreciate it, though. God bless you. <laughs> Listen, um, for those of you who have not heard about the NBCA Endowed Giving Program, then please speak to your state president. Please speak to your state president. Because all of this works together. When you look at branding, when you look at marketing, when you're getting that word out about what is going on within the NBCA uh, convention, it is absolutely amazing. Because the bottom line, this leadership team of your president and cabinet is all about serving churches. So when you look at branding, when you look at plan giving, when you look at this endowed giving program, it's about serving churches. So if you have not heard about it, you can go to the, uh, the convention's website. Uh, endowed giving is a part of what's going on. You can read more about it takes you there. I will be available today to answer questions as well as uh, provide additional information. And for, the, for if you have a state president and you have not talked to him about endowed giving and how it helps these three things. Number one, the endowed giving program helps each individual that sits in your pew. So if you're sitting in the pew, this program helps you. If you're pastoring a church and you have someone in your church, it helps you, each individual in the pew. Second, it must help each local church because it about this program is about serving churches. It must help each individual church. And thirdly, it must help the convention as a whole. I look forward to talking to each of you, literally each of you, as well as your state presidents as we continue to move forward. Thank you and God bless. Hold on, just one second. I know I'm, I'm pushing you a little fast. You don't have a PowerPoint. But if you would just tell them what the product is. You know, yes, the absolutely. You know, that um, what we use for this financial uh, product is a final expense policy that allows for a member of your church to get a final expense policy and put your church's name on the policy. Put your church's name on the policy. So what happens is, the first thing it takes care of is your member. Because if a member transitions, passes away, there's no bake sale. There's no fish fry. Young folks, there's no uh, GoFundMe page. That member has taken care of their immediate responsibility of covering for their family, as well as their children, as well as their church family. Because an endowment is identified through this planned gift to take care of their family and leave something to your individual church. Amen. And I really, when he first brought it to me, I did a pilot program. I don't know if it's 12 or 15 churches in Louisiana. I really didn't think people were going to do it, even at my own church, because I figured they already had insurance. 
But I was shocked. How many people signed up? Uh, we ended up out of the 12 uh, initial churches that supported, we ended up with almost uh, $750,000 of uh, insurance for the individual members, another 135000 donated for endowment to their local church. It works. It literally will make a difference. Let me assure you, when a member transitions at your church and that family receives funds to cover their expense, that church receives funds because that member is no longer there to serve and provide their tithes and their offering, and the continuation of the mission of the church continues on, it makes a tremendous difference. Amen. Thank you very much. And David Harris will be around. Other groups have been doing this for years. And we're wondering why we are struggling. We need to get into some of these vehicles that can help us. I had a lady died at my church, and I didn't cry at my mother's funeral. I cried later. But I cried at that lady's funeral. She was given a good amount every month. And she was gone. And we didn't have an endowment from her. All right? So I don't make a big thing out of it in my church, so they won't try to kill me. But my wife and I and many of our members now have a policy. Part of it goes for final expenses for us. The other part goes to the church once we expire. And everybody in here is going to die. That's a given. Everybody in here is going to die. And so we need to find out how to leave something behind to endow Brother David. Our treasure will come because remember, we have not raised this 500000 yet. So Dr. Sampson needs to come and then our dean, director. Is Director Taylor here? He's probably somewhere running something off. But the dean is here. Oh, there he is right there. All right. Uh, but Dr. Sampson will come and receive the offer. Look, this is a part of it. This is a part of it. That's why we're trying to get these professionals in here to help us so that we will have systematic giving and we won't have to have all this snatching giving. But right now we got the snatch. All right. No. To our president and all officers, my brothers and my sisters, we are operating in a time sensitive area. And therefore, I'm going to ask you to please, sir, please, ma'am, uh, prepare to give and to give liberally. Uh, as you have heard it stated, it takes funds to operate. You know that. And uh, I'm going to ask you to please, sir, and please, ma'am, join in this effort today. I'm getting the offering with $100. And I'm asking everyone who can, who will, to please join with me in this level of giving today. Please, sir, please, ma'am, register. Uh, registration is located in the next building. Uh, there are signs directing you to registration. Uh, we're asking everyone to please register. We're asking everyone to get a cap card. If you have not already committed to as a cap giver, you heard about the CAP campaign. If you have not committed as a CAP supporter, we're asking you to please, sir, please, ma'am, seriously consider and follow through on your commitment at the level that you are comfortable uh, in your commitment to support the work of this convention. If you need a CAP card, you may raise your hand. Ushers are coming now. They have them and you can get a cap card. Those giving $100, please come now. Those giving $100 in this offering, please come now, and thank you so much. I need that bag, that was just a, okay, okay. Thank you so very much, thank you so very much. Those giving $100, good morning, Dr. Pleasant. Thank you so much, he sent his up there. Thank you, Pastor Gardner. Thank you, Pastor Trailer. Thank you, all of you pastors, pastors who are coming, giving these offerings of $100 level. Here's another. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you. That's Deacon Foster there from the Holman Street Baptist Church, Houston, Texas. Made a commitment. Over there. Brother Foster. 
Brother Foster's family, Dr. Foster. He's a member of Holman Street Baptist Church, and he did what I want you to do in the morning, is to meet me in the ballroom B. We had prayer meeting this morning at 6 a.m., 6.30, 6.30, and we got through praying, and he committed to give $2,000 for the retreat center project. Brother Foster from Holman Street, Houston, Texas. We're going to pray the money out of you. Reverend Lord Hall brings $100. He came out of registration to bring his $100 this morning. We're going to take another off on this evening, Reverend. <laughs> Brother Forrest Hall Law, Senior Women, WIA, Ministers' Wives, Brotherhood, all hundreds of dollars. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very much. Are there others? You didn't have $100, but you've got $50. Would you run that, please? You have $50. You have $50. You have $50. Yes. Thank you, Brother David. There. You have $50. Won't you bring $50 in this offering? For this offering for today. This morning offering. Fifty dollars. You don't have a hundred. You now fifty. You got fifty. Thank you for the camera. Amen. He's coming. That's right. Thank you, Reverend Franklin. Amen. Thank you so much. There's a hundred dollars for Brother Bethia. Thank you, sir. We still receiving hundred dollars. Thank you, Doctor Campbell. Thank you, Reverend Franklin. New pastor getting installed is coming Sunday. It's gonna come back to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. You didn't have the hundred. You didn't have the fifty. But you've got twenty. Won't you come? You got twenty dollars for this offering. You got twenty dollars for this offering. You got twenty. There you are. Thank you, Sister Archangel. Thank you, Rev. Joseph. Come right on. Thank you. You got. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Rev. Meeks. God said. Thank you, Sister Dickey. Sister Dickey. Sister Pamela Dickey is giving fifty. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sister. Amen. Sister Carnish. Amen. Thank you, Brother Black. Amen. Thank you. You got 20. Come right on, Sister Bookman. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sister Robinson. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Garner. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sister Deacon. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Cross. Amen. All right, you didn't have 100, you didn't have 50, you didn't have 20, but you got 10. You got 10 or you got five. Won't you come now, please? You got ten, or you got five dollars for this offering this morning. Why don't you bring it, please? Thank you, Reverend Glover. Amen. Good to see you, sir. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Palmer Porter. Amen. Thank you. You got ten dollars. You got five dollars. You're bringing it now. Thank you so much. Amen. While we're coming, I just want to remind us, in our 7 p.m. worship tonight, we will receive the offering for HBCUs. For those who brought that $500 for HBCUs, we receive it publicly on tonight. Amen. The Senior Women's Auxiliary is paying for the uh, room and board of a student at Simmons College Amen. in the name of the late sister Susan Turner. They have another thousand dollars for that student. If anybody want to add to that, see Sister Barbara Wright. Amen. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. Ushers are going to march today. Estimated ushers, we used to seeing y'all march. Y'all just walking. Amen. Step, step, step. Come on. Step. Step, step, step. Amen.
step, step, step. Y'all still walking, y'all walking. We have some special music for you. All right. All right, thank you so very much. Shall we pray? God, our Father, we thank you so very much for those who have been liberal and giving this morning. We pray that you would bless them and that you bless these offerings. In the name of Jesus, amen. I want uh, Dr. Kemp just to come for half a minute and tell us about these t-shirts. Thank you, President Talbot. Um, the um, Health Awareness um, Ministry, Health Awareness Team, um, along with um, uh, the auxiliaries, uh, all the auxiliaries of the NBCA have supported this effort to uh, highlight uh, Heart Healthy Month. You know, February is Heart Healthy Month. And uh, so these uh, t-shirts uh, on the back uh, uh, demonstrate some of the things that we need to be doing to support uh, 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 having a healthy heart. And uh, really we owe this to um, the Dickey sisters, Sister Terry, the Dickey sisters, that's right. Sister uh, Tara Dickey and Pam Dickey uh, out of Mississippi. Amen. They're the ones who put this together. So God bless you. We're getting ready to receive our Dean of our Congress, Reverend F.D. Sampson, Jr., uh, who is the treasurer for the Preachers Conference has agreed to, and Reverend Laylis Johnson's in agreement with it, so I recommend it to you that he'll move from treasurer to vice president, and then they will get a treasurer and other officers. So if y'all want me to expedite that, all in favor say aye. aye. Congratulations. Good morning. We're preparing to go to our classes for the mini Congress sessions. President Tolbert, to all the officers that are present, I want to thank Dr. Kemp and all the good people of the Antioch Church for preparing for uh, this session, board session, and mini Congress. I asked the teachers to prepare for about an hour, 20, an hour and a half worth of teaching time and experience and we want to have you to know uh, that we have for senior pastors to make a change. Uh, for senior pastors, uh, it was pastoring God's people. Dr. Kenneth Maurice Davis was to be the teacher for these two days. And when I learned of his family issue, of his mother's health and his needing to be with his mother and him not able to be here, uh, we felt we could not reach out in a timely fashion so that we're going to substitute ourselves, yours truly, to stand for the pastor's class, the senior pastors. And if you have a program, you know that it is designated to be in Rector Hall. Rector Hall, this is the building immediately next door uh, that we will gather there in just a few minutes for that class session. And our class is going to deal with discipleship. Our class is going to deal with discipleship. We wanted to have uh, attention for our younger pastors reaching out to those who are beginning their pastoral task. And we have one of our newer pastors, Dr. Andre Lewis, who pastors the New Faith Baptist Church in Houston, Texas. He succeeds the Reverend T.R. Williams. Uh, Dr. Lewis, are you in the room at this time? Dr. Lewis, are you present in the room at this time? All right, well, he's going to lead Pastoring in Perilous Times. That's in the sports complex. That's the Daddy Day room, Daddy Ray room, Daddy Ray room in the sports complex. We've asked someone we have super confidence in to lead the women's class, and that is Sister Jackie Robertson. Sister Robertson, would you stand? She's a member of the Mount Sinai Church of Austin, Texas. She's going to give leadership, and that's going to be right here in the sanctuary 
for the sisters to be right here in the sanctuary. And we're asking to lead the layman, the brotherhood, a good deacon, faithful member, faithful to the convention, know him well, ask him to do it. That's deacon brother Albert Black. If you're in the room, would you stand? He's going to lead the layman's class. That's going to be in the dance room, that dance room in the sports complex. Uh, teachers, we're going to provide you with evaluation sheets that after the conclusion of your class, you'll be able to turn in your evaluation forms. We want to get feedback from the students as far as their experience in the class. Thank you so very much, Brother President. Classes will end at 12.30. Classes are scheduled to end at 12.30, and then we'll have our break time. But teachers, as much as you prepared for today, uh, will satisfy, and you can let your class go if it's not quite 12.30 uh, when you finish what you're doing for today. But 12.30 according to the program. All right, we're going to have prayer, and then we're going to transition for our classes. Would you bow with us? Heavenly Father, as we prepare to move from this place into our period of teaching and instruction, bless it to make us a better people for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.